Welcome back to the final hour of today. And the family of the late Alroy von Royen, uh, von Royen uh, is opposing the release of his murderer. There's a possibility that the so-called station strangler could be set free. Norman Afsal Simmons has spent m almost 30 years behind bars after he was convicted of murder and kidnapping. He's now due for parole. Simmons was committed, uh, convicted in 1995 for his role in the kidnapping and murder of 10-year-old Alroy von Royen. Now, today, Correctional Services engaged the community and other interested persons on his parole. ENCA reporter and Obesuta Hejana is tracking these developments and we cross over live to her for the very latest. A very concerning time for families involved in the brutal murder of the 10-year-old at the time, Nomesutu. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, the parole conditions uh, that he'd be looking at should he be set free? Certainly, Rafua. Well, we do know that or we can confirm that uh, Norman Afzal Simons is due for parole on the 20th of July, that is next week on Thursday, and we've heard from the Correctional Services that he will be on parole for life, and that will also include about eight visits per month from the Correctional Services officials where he will be currently, or he will be staying in an area called Para in Cape Town where the Goodwood uh, Correctional Community Services will be uh, monitoring his parole. And we understand that according to the Correctional Services, he will also be afforded an opportunity to seek employment as they're saying that at the end of the day he needs to make a living. However, should he breach any of those conditions, he will be sent back to prison, according to the Correctional Services. But let's take a listen to Mr. Bali, who was explaining those conditions a bit earlier on during that dialogue with the community of Mitchell's Plain and other um, crime fighters and community leaders. In terms of the conditions that will be sent for him, the first one will be house arrest 24 hours. I'll come back to that one later on. The second one is the rest, the rest, the restriction to magistral area, meaning that you will not be allowed to leave the magistral area. If there's need for him to do so, an application must be made subject to approval. And there must be a valid reason for such, such as medical attention or other life-threatening situations. He will not be allowed to talk to the media, both electronic and print media. If there's a need for him to do so, he must make application in terms of Section 123 of Correctional Service Act, then he must get approval first. He will also receive eight visits per month. That will include day and night visit by community correction office. It means he will be allocated someone who's going to supervise him and he is subject to get this visit. He is also expected to come to the office to attend further programs that will be allocated to him, including services by social workers and the, the correctional officer that will be allocated to him. He will further be restricted from being in the midst of children since the case that is uh, facing him is related to children. Going back now to the first one that I spoke about, the house arrest. Having said that, he's still going to qualify four hours per week. Those hours, as I alluded earlier, those are the hours for medical attention. Those are the hours to consult when he's having life-threatening challenges that we allow him to have. The hours to, to go and also check if he can seek employment because at the end of the day, he still needs to sustain himself. So, in short, those are the conditions that are set for him. Now, Basutu, how has the community responded to this news? 
Well, we've heard from community leaders, especially the Mitchell's Plain uh, Community Policing Forum, uh, its chairperson, Mr. Norman Yankees, saying that, I mean, Mr. Norman Simons has spent almost three decades behind bars. Surely um, he has paid his due. However, the community of Mitchell's Plain should afford him an opportunity to turn around his life. In fact, he should come out and apologize to the families of the victims whose cases remain unsolved. And he was also talking about the fact that, I mean, he had a personal encounter with Mr. Simons back in the days when he was working with them at their Negro organization where he was teaching some of the people there is of course a lessons and also talking about the fact that at time he actually joked with Mr. Simons and said, Man, Norman, aren't you the person that they are referring to, the station strangler? And Mr. Simons laughed it off and, and told him that he was making uh, a mistake. I mean, there's no way, but he says two days later, uh, he was arrested. Mr. Norman Simons was arrested and it came as a shock to them because he was someone that was respected in the community. He was a grade five teacher and he also worked with the youth at the Alpine Primary School here in Mitchell Spain and other community members also talking about the fact that there are still families who have not healed because of those 22 bodies that were found in a field in Mitchell Spain and they were never accounted for because he was only convicted for the kidnapping and the murder of Elroy van Royen but for the other cases there was no proper convictions and they are also calling on the government to reopen that particular case and saying that there can't be a situation where those families or the victims of those families are left behind because they were never consulted before and also the family of Van Royen. But let's take a listen to some of the things were said by the community members, some who are in support of him being released, others questioning whether he has really changed. I also remember uh, having engagements with Norman not knowing that he is the perpetrator, obviously, even a few days before he was arrested. Uh, because Norman is a person, like the priest said, he, he comes from a mother, from a parent. And um, he was a good teacher in Mitchell's plan. I also got him to teach Koza at Nikra. And uh, many of his, in fact, I was one of his first pupils. Uh, he didn't do too well with me, I, 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 was, I don't think I was a good student as such. But he taught many of my, my colleagues and members of the Missus Grand community to speak Koza. I remember seeing him, like I said, about two or three days before he was arrested, and he had this scar. And I almost jokingly said to him, no man but Aren't you the perpetrator? Aren't you the station strangler? And uh, he, he laughed at me. And uh, just to discover a few days later that he was indeed the, the person. But Norman was such a person. Like I said, he was a good teacher. He, he, he always dressed immaculately. He was always very really respectful towards everybody. And that I mean, we know other perpetrators in our midst, and many of them fit that profile. They, they get along well with kids. They, um, they, uh, they were very respectable, and he was exactly the same. But I just want to caution again and remind you that there's no proof that no one can be linked to the other murders. So if it's not him, then it's somebody else out there, and that needs to be investigated. Nobasuta, what about the family? What did they have to say about the most recent developments? Well, the family is not happy at all, Rofiwa. In fact, they're saying that they're accusing uh, government of uh, sort of uh, giving Mr. Simons uh, privileges in prison. They say he was afforded an opportunity to go for counseling, but the family of Elroy van Royen, they were never afforded such um, privileges. And they're also saying that uh, the correctional services only came now to the families and other victims to inform them about the release of Mr. Norman and throughout the years they've never had such engagements and they're also saying that I mean 
they are not happy with him being released. It's not fair for the family because they have to deal with all of those emotions throughout the years. In fact, last week we did went to the Strand area and tried to speak to Elroy's brother, Mr. Peter Van Royen, who did tell us that he was not happy at all and still traumatized and said that uh, he does not want to engage the Department of Correctional Services because they don't understand the trauma uh, that he had to go through all these years and hearing about the passing of his little brother and at the time he could not do anything to save his brother and also calling on the correctional services to possibly look at the cases for other families but we've heard from a family spokesperson Ms. Zora Mudasi who was speaking on behalf of the family saying that the aunt Florence Galant does not want to talk because at this stage they are still um, traumatized with what happened but this is what Zora had to say about them as the family opposing to the release of Mr. Uh, Simons. We are opposed to the parole of Van Rooyen and um, um, Simon. Um, what I can gather from what uh, the fo family told me is that uh, the family was approached by cor um, correctional service uh, the past um, two weeks, um, telling them that uh, this guy will be released. Uh, and, uh, and we feel that uh, the government as a whole and the criminal justice system is um, really failing us as a community uh, of strength and that leadership, uh, be it in a local or higher up in parliament leadership, is when you occupy leadership, and you stand and you claim to stand for the community, you need to fight for the interest uh, of that uh, community. And especially the vulnerable groups within that community, which um, who are children and women, uh, must be your um, priority, not a perpetrator that did uh, the most horrible thing to uh, young boys um, and we must now accept that uh, this guy will be released. Uh, in short and in closing we want to say that um, unlike Norman Simons, the family was never catered for by the criminal justice system. There was never social workers or anything uh, um, provided to the family. Um, Yal Roy has a brother slightly older than me and that man is suffering. It's like taking off a bandage from a wound that you have uh, covered for 28, 27 years and you expect that wound without the necessary treatment, without the necessary care, that wound to be healed, to be healed by now. And uh, Yalroy's uh, brother is really, and the family, in, in, in the broader family is also not coping with the news that this guy will be released. So we want to stand here and say that although the decision has been taken, we are opposed to that decision. And that decision was not in the best interest of the victim's family. Many thanks to you, Nobesutu Hejana, for following the developments around the story for us uh, this hour. That is a reporter out in the Western Cape, Nobesutu Hejana.